friends, Butch Hartman here. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, what we're gonna talk about today is the typical day in the life of a cartoon showrunner. What's it like? I mean, what do we do? What do we cartoon show people that manage cartoons? What do we do every day? You're probably wondering, hey, do the cartoons just make themselves? I've heard people say that. You work in cartoons? I thought everything just made itself. Did their computers do everything? Yeah, exactly. I just hit a button and boom, we have Pinocchio. There it is, whammo. That's exactly what computers do. No. So what do I do? Here's my typical day. 6.30, my eyes open. Bing, I'm awake. I get out of bed. First thing I do, I read my Bible for half an hour. Why do I do that? To get my heart in the right place. 7 a.m., I go down to the gym and I work out. Why? Because I gotta be healthy and strong because I'm the leader. I've gotta be the most alert, the most focused because people have questions for me and I wanna be like, what? 7.45, I am at the breakfast table eating breakfast. What do I have? I normally make eggs and bacon. Why is that? Of course, it's unhealthy. It's super healthy. You know why? Because it's protein. That's why. And I have some vegetable juice with that because juice has vitamins. Like I said, you got to be healthy and strong to be in the cartoon world at a high level. Then, after that, what do I do? I take a shower. Why? Because I just worked out and I smell like eggs and bacon. That's why. So I take a shower. By 8.30, I'm out of the shower and heading out the door. Kiss the wife on the cheek. Kiss the kids on the head. Yes, they're my kids. And then I get into the car. I get into my car and I drive to Burbank. So about 9.30 a.m., I'm getting off the freeway. I'm pulling into Nickelodeon. I pull up to the parking garage. There's a big giant splat on the wall. And I look up, I say, that's Nickelodeon, all right. So I pull into the parking garage and I drive by the bench. It says Nickelodeon 2. They want to remind you, you're a Nickelodeon. Splat, bench, you're there. So I park my car. I walk in. I say hi to the guard, Don. He's been there for like a thousand years. Hey, Don. Hey, Butch. So I walk past Don. I go into Nickelodeon, up the green slime stairs to my office. There's my office. I go to my office and I sit there at my computer. 10 a.m. to 11, I'm answering emails. I'm doing things uh, probably that I brought home with me. I normally bring home work with me, but I sit it down, make sure I got all my work that I brought home. I've got to give it to my production people. They have to get it into the production pipeline. There's uh, character models I've gone over, drawn by the amazing artist, but I come sometimes touch things up. There's timing sheets, exposure sheets that I've gone over to fix things up as well. There's background work. There's all kinds of scripts I've gone over. I take that work home with me, I bring it in, I distribute it, then I get the new day's work. I sit down, I look at my schedule, my assistant comes up, hey Butch, I'm like, hey assistant person, they probably bring me a cup of coffee. Never, I got my own coffee all the time. By the way, I don't even drink coffee, I drink tea. So I get my own cup of tea all the time. Why? Because tea has caffeine and I get to stay awake. So, if it's a Thursday and it's 10 o'clock, I'm going down to a recording session. I've got all my writers behind me because I'm sitting there kind of controlling, you know, the recording session like it's Captain Kirk, like it's a spaceport, like I'm, I'm, I'm like flying the ship, I have an engineer next to me, he's probably like Sulu, he's like Sulu, oh my, it's Sulu sitting there next to me, and I'm like Captain Kirk, and I'm controlling the recording session, I'm telling them how to record their voices. If it's not a Thursday, around 11 o'clock, I'm going into a writer's meeting. Why? We have to write scripts for the show. The writers have probably already written a script for me, but I've got to go over the script to make sure the script is funny. So the laptop is here, there's a projector that uh, blows the, uh, the script up onto a screen so every writer in the room can see it. So we go over every joke, we say, is that the funniest joke? Is that the funniest joke? Is that the funniest joke? So we make sure that script is really good. Uh, we make it as good as we possibly can. So we've gone over the script. It depends on the day of the week. It could be a script meeting at 11 or it could be a storyboard meeting. If it's 11 o'clock on a different day of the week, there's a storyboard meeting. I've got to go over storyboard after storyboard with all my storyboard artists to make sure that the storyboard is lining up the way I want to see it. I want to make sure this drawing looks good. I want to make sure this sequence flows well. If these jokes flow well, I want to make sure that each drawing from scene a hooks up to the beginning of scene B, and uh, the end of scene B hooks up to scene C, and so on and so on and so on. So storyboards are made up of hundreds of pages. This can take quite a while. So um, from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, it's either a storyboard or a script. And then between 12 and 12.30, or sometimes the meeting even goes till 12.30, now it's lunchtime. So if I turn right out of Nickelodeon, I go down to the submarine sandwich place. There's two sub sandwiches place. There's Subway, the big place, or there's the mom and pop sub place called the Sub King that nobody knows about, the people at Nickelodeon, they make great subs there. So I go there to support that place because it's not the big giant corporation that Subway is. But I love Subway, don't get me wrong. It's just this other sub place, 
I really like them because they're like personal friends. So anyway, so I, I've been going to eat in there for 20 years too. There's also the Talleyrand restaurant, which is down the street on Olive. There's a, there's a, there's a, it's a great diner. You can get anything you want there down at the diner. Or there's all kinds of places down that way in Burbank as well. Or I can turn left and go into the city of Burbank. Ooh, downtown Burbank. I can go right down over there and turn left. There's a bunch of great restaurants there I can eat there. Or the sandwich place is usually pretty good because I go down and get my sandwich. I come back and I work at my desk through lunch most of the time. Yes, a lot of times I go out with the crew. Sometimes if it's someone's birthday or a special occasion or just hey you know what let's go hang out and write more stories I'll go and do that I'll take people out to lunch or we'll all go out to lunch together that's a lot of fun I like to write stories at lunch too because it keeps the creative juices flowing as well so now we come back from lunch it's about 1 2 o'clock if I'm working at my desk I'm still sitting at my desk I'm watching some YouTube videos or I'm actually working on a script or something like that because there's scripts that I write as well or I'm going over scripts that have already been gone over I'm adding my final touches to it now between 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock several things can happen. One, I can work at my desk and go over things and fix up, uh, you know, drawings, fix up scripts, that type of stuff. Yes, there's that many scripts. They come in all the time. There's always a script to look at, always a storyboard to look at, always a character design to look at. And there's always film to watch. There's always films that come back. When I talk about that, I mean animation is coming back from overseas. The uh, shows that have already gone out, that have been written, that have been designed, that have been recorded, those shows go overseas. All the pre we call it pre-production. That means all the storyboards, the scripts, the character designs, everything has been shipped out to Korea. Why? Because it's cheaper to animate in Korea. This was something that was established a long time ago. American companies would simply charge too much money to animate shows in the United States. So they, years ago, I believe it was Bill Hannon, Joe Barbera, and some other Saturday morning titans back in the day decided to get things animated overseas because it was much cheaper. So anyway, that tradition still continued with Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, Tough Puppy, and even Munson as a Beast. We animated in Canada. Not technically overseas, but over a, uh, a country line. Yes, you know, there's no ocean between us and Canada. Should there be? Leave a comment down in the comment section below. Whoa, whoa, heart fans, hang on a second. I just want to let you guys know that today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. That's right, Squarespace is a place where you can build squares in space. The no, final front, what? That's not it. No, that's not it? I should, oh. This channel is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful, you know what? I'm just gonna go from my heart. I use Squarespace all the time, and I want you guys to know that they are awesome. If you guys have something you wanna do online, build a really cool online presence for yourself and just really make yourself known, put great pictures of yourself up, videos that you love, maybe build an online store, Squarespace is the place to do it. My website uh, was built using Squarespace. I post a lot of my drawings on there, instructional videos, things I really love like pictures of turtles maybe. I'm just saying, turtles are cool. They have a house on their back. Wouldn't that be cool to have? Okay. Anyway, go to squarespace.com forward slash butch to get 10% off your next purchase. That's squarespace.com forward slash B-U-T-C-H to get 10% off. And uh, I'm just saying, turtle pictures are pretty cool. Okay. It's about two o'clock, usually a retake meeting. A retake meeting is this. You get take one. You get a take one of your show. If the episode is a Fairly Odd Parents episode, it's 11 minutes long, here's your take one. This is every scene animated, and you have to watch it with your uh, assistant and your production manager and your post-production supervisor. You sit there and you watch the show. You do what's called retakes. You call retakes, meaning, okay, there's Timmy Turner. Oh, they didn't draw his hat right. Okay, fix his hat in scene one. Okay, let's see. There, oh, there's Cosmo. Oh, they colored his hair blue. Okay, fix Cosmo's hair in scene four. Okay, uh, oh, wow, they didn't draw the house right. Oh, the animation is terrible. Oh, oh boy, they missed that scene. Oh, they forgot to put that scene in entirely. So you make notes about all the stuff that's wrong in that particular take. And you're nice about it, but you know, they, they, these things have to be pointed out. It's in the contract. They've got several shots at it to fix it. And then you probably get about three shots at each, you know, you get to watch your show three times. Meaning I do my retakes, we watch it, the notes go out, a week later they come back, you have to watch it again, maybe a couple more notes, it goes out, comes back, and by take three, things should be pretty much fixed. Don't become one of those animators that never lets things get finished. If you sit there and, and linger and linger and linger, your show will never get done, and then the company you're working for will be very upset with you because it's their job to get cartoons out the door. You've signed a contract to make these cartoons. So, you know, people say, Would you always 100% satisfied with your cartoons? I say, well, 100%, maybe 70%. If I can get to 70%, that's good. Because I gotta get this cartoon out the door because then another cartoon's coming right behind it. I'm gonna get cartoon, cartoon after cartoon done, episode after episode to keep feeding the beast 
that is Nickelodeon, the shows that have to keep going on to the air. Okay, so it depends on the day. Sometimes I'm calling retakes from two to about four o'clock. And at the end of the day, maybe between four and 5.30, there might be another writing meeting, another script is due. We have to go back in for another story session. So I've got to help the writers construct a story or construct a joke or even go over another script or I'll sit and go over another storyboard or I'll go over some more character designs with the artists or I will actually be at a post-production session where I will be at a post-production house that's outside of Nickelodeon down the street in Burbank and we'll be sitting there make, doing a final mix on an episode. What's a final mix, Butch? Is it like a cake mix? Do you mix things up? You kind of do. You watch the movie, you watch the animated film that you've made. You have the music, the sound effects, and the dialogue and they all have to be mixed together. So the music's not so loud, you can't hear the dialogue, or the dialogue's so loud, you can't hear the music, or the sound effects are taking over the whole thing, you can't hear what's going on in the story. You gotta mix them all evenly, so when the audience watches it, the story is told clearly. That's what this is all about. It's all about clear storytelling. And then, if there's, um, an, if it's another day, maybe it's not a post-production day, maybe there's an editing day. Sometimes I'll come to work at 10 o'clock in the morning, I have to edit for two hours, I have to edit an episode because the editing has to be done. We might, after we get our take one of our show done, we get all the scenes down to where we really like them. Okay, all that animation looks great, but the show is always too long. We always over-animate the show. Why? So we have extra. We have to have extra. It's better to over-animate and cut a little bit off than to have not enough and be scrambling at the end to fit other stuff in the story. If the show is supposed to be 11 minutes long, we always probably animate about 11 minutes and 22 seconds or 30 seconds. So we gotta chop the show down to about 11 minutes. So 5.30 or 6 o'clock, I'm in my car driving back to my home where I live. It's about an hour from Nickelodeon. So I get home at about 7 o'clock. When my kids were young, I'd get out of the car, go up to my house, and I would play with my kids for about an hour and a half till they exhausted me completely. We'd all have dinner. Uh, and I put my kids to bed by about 9.30, 10 o'clock. I go back to my office upstairs at my house and I continue working. I work on stuff that I brought home with me. Storyboards, scripts, more drawings. And I would just work on stuff until about two in the morning until I fell asleep from exhaustion. And then the whole process would start over again. And that is a typical day in the life of a cartoon showrunner. And by the way, I can never have done this by myself. This is not all about me. This is just what I would do. I had plenty of other people doing amazing, amazing work. You cannot do a cartoon by yourself. You can do little drawings by yourself, but doing a giant production uh, like a TV series, you just can't do it by yourself. So I just want to thank all my amazing crew members and all the people I worked with over the years because it definitely uh, was fun, but definitely not super easy. You've really got to want to do it. You have to love what you do. You have to love it. So I hope you love what you do. Hope you get to do what I got to do someday because it is a blast. And there's more to come. I'll still be doing more stuff. So that's a typical day in the life of a cartoon showrunner. What did you guys think? What part were you fascinated by the most? What part were you horrified by the most? Uh, was it me talking so much? Maybe that that kind of horrified me a little bit. Maybe that maybe that was kind of kind of scary. I should pull that down a little bit. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And let me know what else you want to know about a uh, day in the life of a cartoon showrunner. I have a lot of stories. I can get really specific about really small specific events that take place in the life of a cartoon production. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, don't forget, art <sighs> gives you power. Use it wisely. Hey, Heart fans, subscribe here to keep up with me, Danny, Timmy, Dudley, Bunsen, and the Noob Network, my new app full of cartoons, shows, and games. Download it here. Click over here to watch my most recent video and here to start a playlist related to this video. Whoa, check out that awesome fan art. To be featured here, use hashtag heartfanart and tag me. I'm on every social media platform known to man. Cartoon Butch out. Pencil drop. <laughs>